I'm going to tell you today about the epidemiologist fallacy. This is a composition fallacy. It's comprised of two mistakes. The ecological fallacy, which is everywhere known uh, and just as much disregarded, and the p-value fallacy, which is not as well known but everywhere abused. Now, the ecological fallacy is easy. It is when a researcher says X causes Y but where X has never been measured. And instead, a proxy for X, y, W we might call it, has been measured for X instead. And where the proxy is taken as if it were the measure. So let me give you an example. Uh, the most common mistakes found in the ecological fallacy these days are in PM 2.5 studies. PM 2.5 is particulate matter of a certain small size dust. Uh, it's called PM 2.5 because that sounds more scientific. Uh, you can't get a grant saying dust causes problems because not all dust is man-made. Some is, but that which isn't is not suable, so they call it PM 2.5. Well, you'll see lots of headlines that say PM 2.5 causes dementia, or PM 2.5 is linked to cardiovascular disease, or PM 2.5 is associated with various lung maladies and the like. But in all of these studies, I've never seen one that's different, in all of these studies, the actual exposure to PM 2.5 is never measured. Instead, a proxy for uh, the dust that people might have been exposed to is measured. Uh, various things are like land use models. Uh, people in a database will supply the zip code of their homes. And the zip code of their homes tells them how far their residence is anyway from, for instance, a highway. And the highway is taken to be the source of the PM 2.5. Or it doesn't have to be a highway, it can be a uh, power plant, a coal-fired power plant, or the like. Anything. Anything that is a proxy for uh, actual exposure. But of course, Distance from a highway is a crude, an extraordinarily crude and error-prone measure of someone's actual dust exposure because you don't spend all day at home. Uh, most of the time you're going to be spending indoors, not outdoors, and the home has various filter, filtering capacities and so forth. And some of the time you're on vacation, you're not anywhere near the source and all these kinds of things. So the certainty in the measurement that they have in these land use models or other ways of approximating the proxy of the actual exposure is taken as the certainty that we have in the actual exposure. So these land use models will say, hey, this, guy, this set of people were exposed to this as much dust. That becomes the actual exposure to dust. And then we have to marry this ecological fallacy with the p-value fallacy, which says that when the statistical measure between this proxy and the outcome, such as dementia or cardiovascular disease of some kind, is small. When the p-value is we, People believe a cause has been found, or a cause has been proved, or a cause that they thought was there has been substantiated. This is utterly false. A p-value is a terrible, absolute abysmal measure. Every use I say, and I can prove this, of a p-value is a mistake or a fallacy in and of itself. A p-value gives you the probability of something that did not happen, and it's taken for the probability of something that will or could happen. This is a category mistake, very well known itself among statisticians, but everywhere abused. So again, the ecological fallacy is uh, when X is said to cause Y, but where X is never measured, and a proxy is, and the certainty in the proxy is taken for certainty in the actual measure X itself. And the epidemiologist fallacy takes that ecological fallacy, supplies it with a uh, statistical model of some kind, and out pops a wee p-value, and cause has been claimed. Now, the researchers are very careful about this in their articles, not to use the word cause itself in their direct methods. They'll say, instead say linked to, or associated with or statistically significant, but cause is what they mean. They all believe it's cause, and they and certainly by the time it gets down to a newspaper, cause is definite. And so the question is, how can you spot an ecological or epidemiologist fallacy when you see a headline? And you can't.
There's no way for you as a civilian to take a look at a newspaper headline and discern whether or not you have been exposed to the epidemiologist's fallacy. It just can't be done. Newspaper reports at best are misleading. And at worst, they're deliberately obfuscating. And that accounts for much of today's media. So the only thing you can do is to go back to the original paper and read it and see whether or not the epidemiologist's fallacy has been used. As I say, in every paper I've seen so far about PM 2.5, I'm willing to be corrected, has used this fallacy. And I'm going to show you a link, I'm going to show you a little picture if I learn how to uh, edit these videos of what I call the double epidemiologist fallacy. This was a paper that was the rage uh, just a little bit ago. The double epidemiologist fallacy says that X causes Y, where we haven't measured X, instead a proxy for X is used instead, but where we also haven't measured Y. Y is not measured and instead a proxy is taken for Y. And so we have the idea that X causes Y, that PM 2.5 causes dementia, but we haven't measured PM 2.5 and we haven't measured dementia, not on individuals. Uh, the, the most common way that this is done is to take county level or state level or even country level data and believe it applies to the individuals, all individuals or all individuals on average who live in a county. And this is absurd. It's just absurd. And so why do people do this? They know of the ecological fallacy and the p-value fallacy is less well known, but uh, they did learn back in Statistics 101 that p-values cannot discern cause and that p-values have nothing to do with what they want. They want the probability of dementia given exposure to PM 2.5. They don't get it. They get something else. That's entirely wacky and I'm not going to tell you. You can read about it in the links below about what a p-value really tells you. So why do people do this? Well, the epidemiologist fallacy is extraordinarily fecund of generating research. And research is needed for people to write papers. And academics need papers or they will perish. It really is publish or perish. And if they don't have the papers, they can't get the grants. Everybody knows of these things, but everybody uses it. And the excuse usually is, well, everybody else does it. So why can't we? It's usually, it's usual practice. It's common practice. So therefore, we're going to continue. We're not saying this is conclusive. We're going to have uh, lots of discussion and limitations and all this kind of stuff, but it's always done with a wink and a nod. And nobody ever really believes the limitations. They believe that X causes Y. Uh, that's it for now. Uh, next time, maybe we'll do a p-value uh, video itself or some other fun fallacy that you find in research. Thanks for watching.